Hi, everyone, and welcome to the next installment at Libre Canada Books Export Webinar Series, Exporting to Mexico. The presentation should take about an hour, and we'll have plenty of time at the end for questions. We'll be taking questions via the Q&A function in WebEx found at the right-hand part of your screen. Feel free to submit questions as you think of them throughout the webinar, and I'll collect them for the Q&A session. At the end of the webinar, please be sure to fill out the evaluation form. Your feedback is very important to us and to the Canada Book Fund. I am very pleased to present your host, Piedad Sayens, founder of the literary agency Lady Books. Piedad has built on years of publishing experience in South and North America after having worked in Canadian children's publishing and at Fondo de Cultura Económica. With branches throughout South America, it is one of the largest publishers in the Spanish language market. Piedad has a vast and diverse marketing experience, business development, contract negotiation, and rights, as well as a strong understanding of the digital challenges we're facing these days in publishing. Welcome, Piedad, and thanks for joining us. And I'll now turn over the controls to Piedad so that we can get started. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for participating in this webinar. Uh, for me, it's a pleasure to uh, talk to you today uh, about the Mexican market uh, in the publishing industry. So uh, I don't think I need, I need more a presentation, uh, um, apart that it's said by Tristy. But uh, yes, uh, I, I actually start in this industry in uh, Fondo de Cultura Económica, which is uh, the most important uh, Mexican publishing house. Uh, it's a company from the government, uh, so it's a public company in, in Mexico, but they also have branches uh, all around uh, Latin America, also in Spain and uh, the United States. Um, all the companies, all the, all the branches work as a private company. But it's a company that uh, this uh, last year was celebrating its, its uh, 18th anniversary. So uh, it's uh, have a strong catalog that it started usually uh, with, uh, as the name of the company indicates, with the uh, economy uh, books. But uh, now they have one of the most important catalogs in and also in literature and uh, um, children and young adult books. Uh, I will start to give you uh, a quick overview of the, of the Hispanic speaking market. Um, so uh, the American publishing world is composed by 22 countries. The main languages are Spanish and Portuguese. Uh, the total uh, territory is in more than 20 million um, square kilometers. Uh, and the population is today about 650 million people. So the first one in the region is in Brazil with uh, 200 million people followed by Mexico with 120 million people. Uh, most of the population of, from, the, the, of, from Mexico lives in the urban areas. Only in Mexico City are 42 million people, which is almost the population from, of uh, Colombia or Spain. Uh, we can also see in the next slide, we can see uh, by country, um, as you can notice, between Brazil and Mexico is uh, more than the half of the population. Um, and it's also represented about how it, how it is the, the market in the publishing industry. It's a good representation how it, how it works. Um, I will also talk a little bit about the international commerce. The export, uh, Spain is the largest exporter of uh, Spanish books with uh, 44, sorry, 54%, uh, which, which uh, represents 
612 million million uh, in uh, in uh, US dollars. The next country is Mexico. Uh, that is a big difference. It's uh, only the 16 percent, and Colombia 9 percent. Uh, from Spain, they export to other European countries around 108 million, and to Latin America, 79 million. Uh, during the last years of crisis in, in Spain, they have been increasing the, the exportation to Latin America. Uh, everybody says in, in, the, in the industry that uh, uh, Latin America was one of the, the uh, salvation for the publishers in Spain. And, uh, and because of that, because of that, uh, Mexico plays also an important role as a distributor, we will see later. So, um, on the other hand, the import, uh, Latin American imports mostly from Europe, uh, so that North America, from North America, it, it is uh, 296 million. Uh, then we have China, uh, different origins is the, um, is around 111 million. From other countries in uh, Latin America, uh, from Mexico and uh, the countries, um, the Mercosur countries, that is a, a regional agreement, uh, 64 million. Uh, let me check here, okay. So, uh, some more statistics about Mexico. Uh, Mexico is the 11th economy in the world. Uh, the GDP is 2,143,500 billion dollars. Uh, the um, the um, revenue uh, per capita is uh, around 16,000 dollars. Um, is the largest, the 13th largest country uh, in the world, and uh, the population is around 120 million people. Uh, it means that may, it makes Mexico the most populous Spanish-speaking country in the world. Um, uh, actually, the uh, literacy uh, is 92.8 percent. Um, as I mentioned before, Mexico plays an important role as distributor for Central America and South America. Um, here, I want to make you notice that uh, all the region is, is like, uh, they have like subdivisions in region, um, which is Mexico, like the, with the principal role for Central America and its own market. Um, then we have another block of countries integrated by uh, Colombia, Venezuela, Ecuador, Peru, and Bolivia that is led by uh, Colombia. And the third one is uh, the, uh, the South, the South countries like uh, Argentina, Chile, Uruguay, Paraguay that is led by Argentina and also Chile. Um, so, uh, when we negotiate uh, rights agreements, we have to see if, uh, because most of them, most of the publishers will ask to have the rights for all the region, for all the uh, Spanish-speaking countries. And uh, with some of them it is possible because uh, Fondo de Cultura, they have branches in the other countries, so we have for sure, we have a guarantee that they will do a good job in the in the other countries of the region. But uh, it, it is important important to see uh, if uh, if they ask you for the whole right in Spanish, ask them for the distribution channels in the other countries. Uh, 
continue with Mexico. Mexico is one of the three countries of the region with a fixed price law, along with Argentina and Ecuador. Uh, the publishing industry represents only 0.4% of the GDP. Uh, the main issues of the publishing industry is the reading and buying habits and a lack of specialized distributors. Um, what Mexico imports the most is the textbooks, uh, books for universities and technical books. Uh, the region where they, they both base uh, books is from Spain, uh, USA, and Argentina mainly. Uh, the things that they also import a lot is the religious book, scientific and technical book, children and journals, and literature. Uh, it means that if we don't take uh, in, uh, in this uh, in consideration the textbooks, uh, it uh, represents 60% of the universe. Um, the reading height, uh, as I told you, is, is the, the biggest problem in Mexico. Uh, it was ranked in the second lowest place in, in a writing day by UNESCO um, within 108 countries. Mexico was in the second lowest. Uh, but it is also explains why the government is taking care and uh, is uh, it is not a particularity from Mexico. The other countries also have a similar problem. So uh, in Mexico, only 41% of the population spends his free time watch, watching television, while only 12 spend his time reading. 40% of the population has never entered into a bookstore. Uh, it is also explained by the, the um, the uh, fact that most of the population are concentrated in urban areas. So uh, that's, that's why these, uh, these uh, numbers. Uh, the reading rate of the general population decreased from 54.6% in 2006 to 46% in 2012. All this means that the average Mexican reads 2.9 books per year, in contrast to, to Canada, that we have uh, at least uh, 17 books, Spain, 10, and Germany, 12. But um, as I mentioned, it is not only Mexico. Colombia also have a low level, like 2.8 uh, books per year. And uh, the best in the region is Argentina uh, with 4.6. And uh, Chile is the highest, uh, 5.6. Um, that is actually uh, similar to Brazil. Uh, that's why there is a lot of government programs to, to uh, support the reading programs, to supply also the public libraries uh, and the schools even. Um, they develop projects in this sense, and that, that's uh, uh, why also the children and young adults have an, a main importance in, uh, for this kind of, of uh, business. Um, we can also say that there is only one bookstore for every 2,000 um, habitants. Uh, according to the National Chamber of the Mexican Publishing Industry, uh, the negative trend in number of libraries in 2006 decreased from 42,045 to almost 40,000. But uh, for the bookstores, there is uh, an increase, and from 2010 to 2011, um, the bookstores reach 4,345 bookstores. So, um, and they are also working to, uh, to uh, have the number of increasing also in the libraries. Um, okay, now uh, for the reading by Alice. 
by team, uh, the educational books represent 44% of the sales in number of copies and 46% in billing. Uh, the second, the second, in, uh, the second most important is all the programs teach English as a second language uh, because it is also a government sale. That was in the last year 16% in number of copies and 12.8 in billing. Adult literature was 5.5%. Well, Children literature is 9.3%. General information or consulting are 4.3%. Uh, fiction and religious books is uh, each one six. Sorry, 3.6%. Um, and uh, finally, personal growth is 2.6. Uh, so, as a, as a general follow of the, of the industry in this moment, uh, the production, the whole production between private, private and public sector is 340 million copies per year. Uh, for the last year, and that last year in the in the um, report I read, that is uh, dated back 2013. Um, from this, the private sector produces 145.7 million copies, which from which 30% was to the government um, program. The government programs again are the public library supply, the free books for schools, and the national program for uh, English as a second language in elementary school. So, um, if we if we want to see the uh, the uh, distribution and retail channels, we have in first place obviously the, the government. Uh, we have here we will see in the next slide also. Uh, a little clear, um, but here right, for the last year, 2013, the first place was for the government with 32.8% 30, uh, and in second place is a bookstore. So uh, bookstores it continue to be the most important channel to sell books uh, if we talk without the, the government. Uh, the uh, bookstores represent 20, almost 25 percent of the total sales. Then uh, we have the school sales with uh, 17 percent of the book sales. Um, the exports um, are now representing 9 percent, 9.8. Department stores and sales services stores. Department stores are the, the hypermarkets and uh, sales service stores are like mini markets. It represents 5.5%. Uh, they own outlets is because most publishers they have their own, uh, they own uh, bookstores and it represents 3.6%. Sales to private companies is 1.3% uh, um, um, in the book fairs uh, is 0.7%. Um, the direct, direct credit sales are 0.1% and other channels 4.3%. Uh, I will also uh, want to uh, you to notice that the book fairs here uh, is only local fairs without the what well, are international book fairs. As um, they, you have already had the, the chance to uh, to attend this book fair, you know that it's the most important book fair in the Spanish speaking market. Um, but it's a fair where we have the space to to uh, just to uh, to buy and, and sell rights. But it's also a fair open to the public. So that those sales that are very important is not in these uh, in these uh, statistics. So here uh, we have the the uh, in the in this chart the information from 2007 to 2013, and uh, as you can see, uh, the first three years 
the industry has decreased uh, like a very very important decrease in the, these uh, three first years, but then it starts to to grow again, and now we can say that it's uh, stable. Um, there is a little decrease for 2013, uh, we will see now what can explain that, and basically also the, the power of the uh, government sales. Uh, so to finish this, uh, this uh, distribution channel, um, I name you here some of the most important bookstores. Uh, again, Fondo de Cultura Económica, uh, because they also have Big, the big libraries in uh, all around Mexico and also in uh, in the other uh, branches. Um, they they have like all the roles in the in the book chain. Uh, they are pub the publisher, the distributor, but also uh, have the, the book stores. Um, when I worked with them in, in uh, Colombia, they were developing a cultural center. In, uh, in, uh, in Bogota, uh, which is now the most, um, the biggest bookstore in Colombia and one of the most uh, open in, uh, in South America, is a 2,500 uh, um, um, area, the construction area for the, for the bookstore, but there is also uh, an important cultural center where they uh, develop all of the uh, cultural programs, uh, always related with books, always uh, keeping people going by, uh, by the library. And it's uh, actually a very successful project and they are now starting to, to copy this model in uh, Argentina and then uh, in uh, Ecuador. And it, it's how it works also in, in Mexico. And then we have Gandhi Library Bookstore. Uh, it's an independent uh, bookstore chain that is uh, also uh, present in all around the, the country. Uh, then we have the Totano, uh, Porua, Unam, that is uh, the, the bookstore from the, the National University of Mexico, the Universidad Autónoma de Mexico. And uh, then uh, we have Gumbill also, and uh, another um, um, chain that is called Sandbox. Sandbox is actually a restaurant, like a, a restaurant chain, but they have also uh, space for the books. And actually, it's a very important channel for the trade books. Um, Okay, um, now we can see here uh, how it is the percentage of production by team. So uh, mainly, if you can see uh, the educational and elementary books along with the uh, ESO program books are, are almost 70% of the, of the production, 66% of the, of the whole production. And then we have uh, like uh, literature and uh, literacy, uh, literacy studies, uh, five percent, and children journal is, is dinner, fiction is four percent, religious books is three percent, and medical and health uh, also three percent. And now to give you um, an idea of the screen ground and the price. Uh, without the textbooks, we can uh, talk about these uh, these uh, numbers. So, in fiction, a normal print run from Mexico would be around three uh, three thousand and fifty uh, hundred copies, and the the average print price is fourteen dollars. Children and young adults and educational books are higher, five. Uh, 5000 and uh, the price is $8, eight dollars but it also depends uh, because, uh, as I mentioned, the government is buying uh, a lot of books for children and, uh, and young adults uh, to, uh, to support the reading program. So 
So and also uh, to give you an idea, which it means to present a book or that a book uh, um, is, is choose by the government, the uh, print run can go minimum in 50,000 copies to 200,000 copies. Uh, or even more if, if there is something that they, they will put, put in hold in schools. So um, the, the best way to uh, participate in that government program is with that partner culture in, in, in Mexico. So uh, I, I would say we have to see them as partners um, uh, because only that companies can offer directly to the government. The foreign publishers can offer or can participate to the offers uh, we can make to the, um, to the public libraries. Uh, but it is, it is more a uh, niche market. So uh, it is a best way to, to, uh, to present the books in the market. Uh, If we talk about the, the number of titles of published uh, from 2009 to 2013, and here is the, the production um, in, uh, in number of copies, uh, there is a continuing increase in the production in the publishing industry. Uh, the variation, variation between, between 2012 and 2013 is only 2% and, um, and it's, and it's uh, due to the increase in the open market. Here the open market means the production from private companies. Uh, it was around 70% of the whole production in 2013. Um, some more facts in the, in the industry. Uh, the production of new titles is around, or oh, it was in 2013, 30,597 new titles. It means 27.7% uh, more than 2012. Uh, from this production, 71% was preprint and 29% was new release. Um, the total number from the private sector, uh, we see uh, this, uh, this amount, it was uh, 145 million uh, books. It, it means a 2% increase from 2012. Uh, and it, it also comprises uh, uh, with the production in, in uh, reprints and reissues, that is 9 0.4% and uh, the new releases were reduced by 10%. Uh, the increase is basically in the regular production. Um, again, it, it only means the regular production means that it's not uh, production from the government, from the government or uh, to be sold to the government. Uh, but uh, we, we see actually uh, a reduction in the production for the government um, from 57,200 million in 2012 to 51,300 million in 2013. It is uh, about 9%. And here, one of the main uh, factors is when, I, when uh, they have the government change, uh, when they have relations. Uh, they stop buying, you know, it, it, uh, as a regular practice in all the, the countries. So, uh, as they, since they have um, a new president a few years ago, so uh, this, this uh, government change may also the production decrease. Okay, uh, here in this chart, we can see the total number of copies published by the sector. Uh, so the public sector continues to be the, the, the most important. Uh, we have here the whole production we talked about, uh, three, 340 million copies. 
So the public sector in 2013 uh, has 195 copies. Then we have the production acquired by the government. It was 43. Um, the production um, acquired by the open market was uh, 102. Um, as you can see in the, in the chart, there, the, the chart is not, uh, is not uh, a big change between, between these years. It, sometimes it, it increases, uh, they have uh, in Stockholm 11, uh, a little bit less, but it, it's stable. Um, the quantity of copies uh, sales, sales between the domestic and the imported production. So between 2009 and 2012, there is a, a growing trend in the number of copies sold, basically because of the local, local production sales. Uh, however, in 2013, there was an increase of about 3 million copies in both local and imported books. Uh, and the imported books represent 8% of the total sales. Um, okay, here is uh, the similar information but uh, the value of billing. So uh, the sales value in uh, 2013 was one million eighty-eight thousand ninety-nine hundred hundred U.S. dollars. Uh, it means four point six more than two thousand twelve. Uh, yeah, there also was a domestic production increase from eight hundred seventy-five thousand three hundred million million in uh, two thousand twelve. To 931,600 uh, million in 2013. And there is also a little decrease in the imported books by 4%. Uh, some of the market facts to, to remember. Uh, is that uh, educational books is to represent 44% of the sales in number of copies and 46% in billing. Uh, the second place for the ELS program, the government sales, was 16% in number of copies and 12.8% in billing. Uh, the sales within the country represent 90% of the sales but, uh, however, only 61% was in the open market. Um, the export increased only 1% uh, from 9 to 10 between 2012 and 2013. Um, and there's another fact here from the, the sales to the government. It represents 29% in copies but only 11% in billing. Uh, that, that is important to notice that obviously when we made a, um, we went on our books is uh, chosen by the government. Uh, they will ask for an important number of copies, but they will also ask for, for a different price. We cannot sell at the same price that obviously uh, we, we do in a regular um, sale. And um, experts are higher than the inverse, actually. Okay. Ebooks. Uh, from ebooks, uh, there is. Uh, it was really hard to find information about the ebooks. I took in from the official information for the chamber of uh, publishers. Uh, they have the information starting in 2011. So it's really a new industry uh, in the market, and that's why I think it's a potential market to to, uh, to work with, uh, because they have been growing since they start to have their history in 2011. Um, the sales of digital books represent only 0.2% of the total sales, uh, along with the, with the printed books. 
uh, in 2013, the sales was 1,966,000,000, uh, which is 17.6% more than 2000, 2012. Um, and the most important theme in these ebook sales are the science and technology. Uh, they they made the 64% of the value in, in uh, 2013. So uh, as I mentioned before, there is not a lot of information from uh, the ebooks market, but I I can also um, I can also say that. The uh, the main publishers, the uh, that we will see uh, later, they sell the book directly by uh, using their website. Um, also, the uh, the bookstore chains, as we see uh, before, they also uh, offer the ebook uh, ebooks uh, online. But uh, there is not Amazon, for example. They don't have. They still don't have uh, Amazon in the region. I know that uh, there have been uh, negotiation in negotiation, but it's not uh, real yet. So uh, it is important to to uh, just check what happened if Amazon and we we'll go through. It will be easier also. Um, um, now I want to show you also what is. The uh, the uh, photo of the pet sellers from translation in Mexico right now. So uh, as you can see in the in the covers, uh, we have the capital that is uh, published by Pablo um, Cultura. Uh, the capital is in 21st century, and then we also have a city shape of gray, the the Tridoli, and uh, Paulo Coelho. Um, with the last uh, that last uh, release book, uh, the biography of Malala, and also books that have been adapted to to the to the to film uh, as as uh, the Hobbit and uh, Game of Thrones. We also have international renowned authors like uh, Haruki Murakami and uh, or another popular um, series, uh, Maze Runner. And uh, we also find uh, one of the, the books from Alice Mudo, uh, but they uh, they don't have uh, like one uh, ranking that we can just check on it. But I have to check on several several rankings from the library, from the papers, uh, the newspapers, and and this is the title that always uh, came on top on top. Um, as for the children and young adults, the better translation, we have the, the Diary of Vinci Kid, the, that is from one of the other big publishers, Planeta, and uh, we have very, very popular in this moment, um, John Green, not only with the Falling Out Stars, that was adapted also to the, to the movie, but the other titles are still uh, selling well. Um, and the popular ones like uh, the Hunger Games uh, and, um, and uh, for the little ones we have Dr. Seuss that is now also translated in, in Spanish. I really want to eat as a child. Oh, uh, then we have also the Disney books and this case uh, cards and um, what is it's a title from Anthony Brown uh, that is published also by, by Fondo de Cultura. And uh, I found also Caillou, the, the Canadian um, character. And uh, so another Canadian character they have is uh, Benjamin. Um, they have, uh, um, what is the name? Square Squirrel. Um, uh, in French is uh, Trifon de Corée, and um, the, uh, I think I saw another one, I don't remember at the moment. But they, uh, they are buying also the, the, the Canadian, Canadian books. 
And uh, as for my experience, uh, the, uh, the titles they are looking for in this moment in, in uh, children and young adults is um, fiction and, uh, you know, the, the uh, novels that have a, a mix between uh, uh, story facts and history in general, in general and fiction. And also um, a fiction for, for women. Um, in for John Adults, it's the same thing, uh, the same uh, similar titles that we see here, like uh, uh, books about love, about friendship. Uh, this is the, the most at uh, this moment. And, and also, um, uh, another record uh, subject that I that I've been asking for is the uh, books that talk about bullying uh, or, as you say, inclusion books like uh, that we can work with the school well. Um, that took uh, another kind of subject like uh, um, like to get to know when, uh, different countries or uh, they all want to help us to uh, to manage the feelings. That kind of books is are, are in, uh, in Um I'm going to show you now some of the main publishers that we will you will see uh, uh, for sure in the in the book fair in London. Fondo de Cultura Económica, Grupo Planeta. Planeta is uh, actually uh, in the sixth rank, uh, yeah, sixth rank in the uh, worldwide in the uh, most important publishers, uh, publishing house. Um, they have around 100 uh, different imprints in this group. So uh, we have to, to do a little research when we have to offer because they differ on different imprints. Uh, for adults, for they have one uh, imprint specialized in uh, theater or poetry uh, uh, or the uh, day or geography. So it's, it's just to make a good uh, research before. Um, there is another uh, important group that is uh, here that is uh, Santillana. Santillana is part of Prisa group, also from Spain. Um, and in both cases, this is uh, something similar. For uh, the, uh, the production for the Latin American market has has been growing. Uh, they used to have like 60% of the production uh, from Spain and 40% from Latin America, but now it is uh, is uh, in the other side. It is changing the paper. So now it's 60% for for. Uh, uh, Latin America and 40% from Spain. And they have, um, between these two groups and the Fondo de Cultura Económica, they have uh, the most important writers, the, the winners and Nobel Prize, and the most important also because they are also the, like the, the sponsors of uh, very important awards in the, in the Spanish speaking uh, market. Um, Oceano is another important group. Um, they have um, it, it, it's, uh, like the other groups. They have for adults and for children also. And, um, and there is obviously uh, Penguin Random House, as you have uh, followed in the news. So they uh, they have been investing a lot in the, in the um, publishing industry in South America and Brazil. Uh, because uh, they uh, they have like the the force they wanted in that market, and uh, if they are if still uh, consider like a developing country, they have very very stable economy, and uh, they have also several imprints for each uh, specialty. Uh, from the independent, oh, sorry, I'm going to also mention here uh, uh, Ediciones B, Ediciones B. Uh, they also have a complete um, catalog of from adults and children, and they have a strong presence in all the, the countries in, uh, 
in Mexico and in South America. Uh, we have Pretexto, Pretexto uh, Publishing, which is a very important independent publisher. Texto uh, Pito also is independent, but very good quality, uh, and the other one is Tusquet. Um, and uh, the last one is uh, Pagina Face. Um, and these, these, all these publishers here have both adults and, and young, uh, young adults for children and uh, also for the university. Uh, Fondo de Cultura is, is very focused on the on work for, for, uh, for textbooks that can be, uh, can be uh, used in the university. Um, but there is also, I didn't put it here, but there is also UNAM that work with the universities and there is CONACULTA uh, um, that work uh, with focusing in uh, that kind of titles that could be uh, more intellectual, if, if you want to say uh, in that term, uh, that will help students in, uh, in, their, in the university program. And uh, as for the uh, independent children uh, publishers uh, from Mexico, we have Petra Ediciones, which uh, won last year the prize, the DOT uh, in uh, Bologna uh, Book Fair for South America. Uh, we have Sidley, uh, we have uh, Ediciones del Naranjo that have been also nominated for the Bologna uh, Book Fair Award. Nostra Ediciones, um, we also have uh, Ticolotti and Almadia. Um, uh, here, some of the most important literary awards. Uh, I, I, mean, I, I included the Nobel Prize just to say that Mexico has a, a Nobel Prize that is Octavio Paz, and there is an, another name from the region as uh, Garcia Marquez from Colombia or Mario Vargas Llosa from Peru, or Carrera Vizmistral from uh, Chile. Um, then is the Cervantes Award, and the Prince of Asturias is in, in literature, and also Planeta and Alfaguara have the um, uh, award. Mm, okay, so um, just to keep in mind to remember, is a uh, market similar to any other region uh, with a uh, vast offer in uh, books for different uh, ages also. Uh, and here I, I put that there is some rules that may be different. Um, um, and it's just to give you uh, uh, clues about how to approach them. Mexican people, and in general Latin people, you see that uh, friendly people, uh, but it means that it's also uh, informal in the, in the what I mean here is that uh, there is normal that you send an email and you don't get a reply soon. It's, it's, uh, it's not uh, really a situation to worry about. Um, and also for the book fair, for example, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we, all, we know that from here to go to Frankfurt, Bologna, or another book fair, we book the agenda like three or at least two months in advance. Um, in South America, it's not only Mexico, Mexico it's all the region is similar. It's, you can spend like two weeks before. Uh, because if you send one month before, they will say, okay, there's the book fair coming, I have to, to, uh, to fix my, my agenda, but you will really have answers from uh, just two weeks before, even one week before. And the other, other uh, very common practice is you can just show up at the stand, ask for the person in church, I have an appointment, in the in the stand uh, when the fair is is is, uh, uh, is on, so uh, it is normal. <laughs> it's a little strange, and even for me that I'm a, I'm from Colombia, but uh, sometimes that I have really uh, also hard time uh, trying to find uh, answers. But uh, it's cultural, it's, it's, it's common, and uh, we have to just be uh, a little patient uh, with that. Um, there's all kind of publishers, um, 
you can always see for a big growth as uh, I named it before, but um, I would recommend also to see uh, with the independent publishers. They are going, they are doing a great, great job the last year and, uh, and for sure they, they will also pay good care of, of your books. Um, you have to keep your mind and eyes open to, to the market and also think about that uh, when we start a standard relationship with we, we one to sell books, sometimes it's also good to listen to them if uh, they have something to offer. Uh, because uh, there is something that uh, when I when I did my interviews in the last little half book fair, I was told by by several of the uh, persons they they told me that uh, Mexico and the and the, in general the region they used only to be buyers, right buyers. But in the last year they also uh, start to uh, to offer their their production. So it's just keep in mind uh, open to, to see what they do also. Uh, the government still buys a ton of books. Um, and the best way is to, to present the books uh, with, a, with a partner in that market. Um, I've been doing that not only with Mexico, but also with uh, publishers in Colombia and in Chile. It works, it works exactly the same thing. So. Uh, Sometimes they will ask you for sample copies to present. Uh, English will be okay. Um, we can also, if, if we are able to give them some information, uh, I mean, like the technical information in Spanish, or they will present in English, and uh, they will just announce that the title will be translated if it's chosen by the government. Um, I think that is my my last slide. So uh, here is some of the uh, people who helped me to build this uh, presentation. It's uh, Cariel, which is the National Chamber of Mexican Publishing Industry. Uh, CERLAUC, that is a regional center for the promotion of books in Latin America and the Caribbean. Um, and there is the EDEM Foundation that uh, made a directory of children literature, um, Socorro Benitez and Angelica Antonio from Fondo de Cultura Económica, uh, Veronica Mendoza, Ruben Padilla from the Guadalajara International Book Fair, uh, Pablo Martinez and Jose Moreno from Oceana. Uh, thank you so much for your attention.